create works on the Battery Park City landfill that at that point in time was a sandy beach. Beach. Yeah. And there was no buildings, no gardens, no, no nothing. And now it's been built over and uh, has disappeared. But that was a wonderful moment. And the art, part of the art from. Are there any pictures of that? Yeah. Because I think we had a picture, but I don't know. Yeah. And then um, I will just read one quote. This is from uh, an October 1993 article when Ali was the. Um, art editor at Esquire. Rosemary Castoro is among the pioneering American women artists weaned on high modernism, who came of age in the 1960s only to discover she must forge a sculptural style based more on personal discovery than prevailing dogma. So, lots of good history. Um, here we are today, it's a year after Rosemary has died. And um, this exhibition celebrates five decades of Rosemary's work. And I'm very happy to have among this crowd people who've collected Rosemary's work, who've written about her work, and who have curated her work. Um, thanks, Louie and others. Um, Barbara, who was involved with the Home Sweet Home show back in the 80s. <clears throat> but, I'll let you do some talking. Well, I mean, I'd like to first time ask you some questions for our audience now. How many people have been familiar with Rosemary's work before this? I have, well, I mean, I know, recently. We'll see Janet, but this is so fascinating. I have known Rosemary since the 70s, and I have no idea of certain aspects of the work until I went over all the different phases with Hal. Nor did I really, um, it, what do you want to call it, eternalize the astonishing fact that she made almost all of the sculptures herself. She did not have a fabricator. Uh, 90, I mean, there may have been a few things that were fabricated along the way, but what, 99% of them, she did it all. So Unless they were large scale I, outdoor that needed that commission. commission. Yeah. But I, I just want us to look at, at what was here in, in the exhibit and think of the astonishing number of marks that was made. And also when she, uh, even in the early paintings, they're very labor intensive. They don't, and they're usually based on what I thought was interesting, the kind of her code, she had codes that she set up. Uh, when you, and uh, they often related right back to to language, but it was very subterranean in the work. I mean, when she did the whys, did the whys mean why, like why, 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 why. Right. Um, And again, I had never ever seen these early paintings, these very colorful paintings. And at a certain point, she basically uh, decided to remove color from her work. That is an enormous decision to make, for an artist to make. It's a real um, uh, um, editing of the sensibility. And I, since I had never known the color work, when I would talk with her, I never asked her, why did you stop using color? Because I didn't know she used it so early on in the 60s. No, that painting, this painting, the rose red painting is 1964. Now think how, if you think of what was going on in painting at that point, it was kind of the apotheosis of color field painting, uh, abstract, abstract expression that we had kind of the well, but at least in the middle of the boss, if not the back of the boss. And she was um, experimenting with color in a kind of minimalist way mm -hmm. that predicted the, uh, her, her, I think her intellectual involvement with minimalism when the minimalist artists became her friends. And then, of course, since that was an old boy network, they weren't really very good friends um, in terms of a professional career path. And I don't know. Well, what, what you're talking about, I think, is the is the age of the men. The men, the men, the club, the men's yeah. club. That's right. And she's going to come in all the way up until it really doesn't start to break right. down till, 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 till after, what, 78, 79, with patent painting, with people like 
and with feminism, the rise of feminism. Mm -hmm. You know, she was in the boys club because she said, you know, they all came over to her house, and, but, but, but she wasn't even with the club. But, right. Uh, Frank Stella saw the whip. David Roberts was there too. Her husband, Carl Andre. Those artists, of course, as we all know, have become household names in the contemporary art world. But the women of that era, whether you're talking about Reed mm -hmm. Morton, Eva Hess, Ursula von Reidingsbard, Alice Adams, Jody Pinto, any number of, of very talented women, were always on the even second even level to the men. Even if that, even if on the second yeah. level. Yeah. They really well, were. In the shadows. It doesn't break apart until or after, until really starts breaking apart, maybe around 1977, when the big uh, uh, flock of all the California artists start to come, when pattern and immigration starts coming, when you have Holly Solomon, when you have, and you have, um, as I say, the rise of feminism. Um, what what year did the Gorilla Girls show? That's going to be, yeah, that's before, that's 75, 74, 75. Janet and I, on your radio show, Cat Cafe, uh, last week, we're talking about um, the men and the women and how the women were always in the shadow. And then the gorilla girls started to say, hey, wait a minute, this is not. I just count the number of artists, women artists, in terms of, they didn't, but of course, since the gorilla girls were artists who were disguised, they wouldn't reveal who they were. Right. Um, it was kind of, on the one hand, they were fabulous in bringing attention to the problem, but I don't know how much it influenced the careers of those women. I think Martha Wilson was one of them. She would never tell me, you know, she's the friend of Furnace Fowler. But by then, that would have been 77, because Martha doesn't come until 76. Um, the art world had expanded so much after the, the, the late 60s and early 70s, it just blew apart. Alice, you, you would say that, wouldn't you? I mean, how, suddenly there were, you know, 200 galleries, and we're just 60 galleries. Mm -hmm. And there were all kinds of uh, currents that were coming together or fighting with each other. Rosary, in her own way, never played the game. She never played the game. She didn't go to parties with people. She, she did go to bars. Bars, she went to bars. <laughs> and, a few, and a few parties, but she hated being referred to as a woman sculptor. That's right. She wanted to be a sculptor who was recognized for, the work. for her work as an artist and not pigeonholed as a woman artist. Right. And, and again, it's a time And there was a lot of that pigeonhole. I mean, it still goes on. The Hauser and Wirth in LA has opened a new gallery, Hauser, Wirth, and Schimmel. And Schimmel. And their opening show is a show of all women, which is which great. Is, but again, it's it, it for real that was always pigeonholing. It, because how many how many times can you remember? This is a show of only men artists. They didn't announce. Well, they didn't actually announce they might as well have artists. because it was ninety seven percent men and three percent women, maybe. And then there's the Museum of Women Art, Women's Art in Washington, which many people found very offensive when that museum. Right. They Rosemary was invited to be in a show there and refused. She, she, she said, no, she I'm not, don't do it. No. And then we might think that when she went, Rosemary was, uh, she's a generation, well, more than a generation, she's a generation and a half younger than Louise Bourgeois. Think how long it took Louise Bourgeois to get recognized. She, she, she almost had to die to get recognized. Certainly Louise Nelson was recognized for her uh, theatrical, Presence in a strange way, and um, but only thanks to Fred Mueller. Only for the case, case, pushing right. very hard. And if we can think of sculptors, women sculptors. Uh, we can think of um, uh, who am I thinking? Uh, Anne, what's her name? Pillars. Truett. Truett. Thank you, Anne Truett. Who wrote? Mm -hmm. Have you? Has anyone here read her the trilogy of books she wrote? I recommend them to all artists. They are amazing. They are amazing. Now what happened to Anne Truett, again, this is right around when Rosemary was downtown. Uh, let me say another thing. When I, when I worked at the Bill Choice in the 70s, the New York Times didn't cover anything below 14th Street. We remember that. They never covered theater. They never covered art exhibitions. They never covered poetry readings. 
So it's a different world below 14th Street. Rosemary was born 14th Street. Um, Anne Truitt had this great show at Henry Emmerich. She was so thrilled, and she thought that finally she was going to break through, probably around 1963 or four, or maybe a little later. And, and she came from Philadelphia. She put up her beautiful sculpture. She thought everything was going to be wonderful. Not one of them sold. And Emmerich said, "Said you're not, I'm not we're not working any anymore." So she did that. She's written these, these, these they're really autobiographical diaries of the artist in the studio, and um, they really get right to the heart of how do you keep making your work, which is where I want to go with Rosemary, when you actually have suffered many, many kinds of rejection and lack of recognition, and lack of money. Actually, Anne, Anne Truitt didn't lack the money. Rosemary, I think, was incredibly um, um, gallant and, and resourceful, resourceful with what she had. I don't even know how she afforded to do it all. She I mean, worked she hard. She worked hard. She worked hard. You represented her. I mean, how many you would you show her to collectors and what Well, when I when I met Rosemary, um, I was a student at Brown, but I loved her as a person and I loved her work. And we made a deal that I would take pictures of her art and <clears throat> help her document what she was creating. Because um, I had a good camera and I had a dark room with press. And um, we did a trade. So I was able to be someone who couldn't afford any art, but I had a piece of rose wings to his trade, which was pretty cool. Classic part of it. But she was showing with Tibor Dinah. She was showing with, had a great gallery in Paris, mm -hmm. um, Eaton Show in California, Eaton Show, and then Tim to Eaton in, at the new gallery in, in oh, Florida. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was tough because the women were simply not people who got the attention. I mean, Critical it, attention. It, it was widespread and to a big degree still is. Um, that's how it was. Well, also, I think another thing that uh, Rosemary uh, is remarkable for is the, the originality of her work. You can see different influences. You can see you know, how uh, she changes over time, but you can't pigeonhole. Her. And that's actually that's a detriment uh, to an artist of uh, being able to be saleable, right? You have to have a style. I remember a story Deborah Remington told me. Another artist who Deborah said, "Yeah, good, a good friend of Rosemary's and, right. and, and of Ed." But remember Ed when when Pace uh, met uh, Deborah and. And that she wanted to change what she was doing, and they said, You can't change. And she quit the gallery. But she did. She never had as prominent in the gallery again. Right? But she, she didn't want to have, <coughs> they wanted her to make recognizable work that they had you know, accustomed their collectors to. They didn't want her to go to some radical um, new style. And um, so, Rosemary is always experimenting. Look at the drawing she makes, where she's drawing the floaters in her eyes, and she's drawing her, you know, bits of hair. Hey, Sorry, a yeah, the, the idea. Yeah. Welcome, Barbara. Hey, Barbara. Hi, everybody. Oh, <laughs> No, you're right, she didn't. But uh, there was the reality that the men got more attention than the women. Yeah. I mean, we were talking just, just a moment ago about 
the idea that Hauser and Wirth and Schimmel has opened a new gallery in LA, uh -huh. and the opening show is a show of women. Oh, I'm sure she should have lived a little longer. Yeah, that's, and that's but a big thing. But also, that, but, but that show in LA is still, is still a ghettoizing show. I mean, they don't, of course, you know, you don't have it as Cal said very well, clearly. Would she have, even if she were asked to be in the show, would she have said yes? Well, that's a good question. That's I good. don't think so. I, mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swear to it. She, she, she refused been, to be in the show at the Women's <laughs> Museum. Yeah, well, I don't think she would have had anything. I mean, I never had anything to do with it. I mean, that's one of the reasons I guess we were like friends for life. And um, I was always interested in her work because she didn't let obstacles get in her way. Mm -hmm. And she just didn't think like that. She took right. that hard. Right. I would still argue, though, Barbara, that um, the quality of the work uh, was greater than the recognition of that work. Oh, there. yes. But I mean, we could say that about any number of painters over centuries. So what's wonderful is that people are interested in the work now. And it is going to go on. Um, and it does have quality. And it is especially innovative. I mean, Rosemary was always making something else. That's what we were just yeah, saying. Always moving on. Yeah, always, which is unfortunate because if she had stayed with anything long enough, it was that, you know, everybody would have said, oh my God. Oh, that's a castor. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's, that's about the branding issues yeah. that the yes. galleries really yes. like to have predictability yes. and the artists that they represent because, you know, they want the people to walk in and say, oh, I recognize them. Ellie was mentioning that when Deborah Remington wanted to shift gears, mm -hmm. Pace. Pace said, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, the brain is very important. Yeah. Yeah, but and so she quit Pace. That's when she she said, I'm not going to be represented by you anymore. Because Ooh. she really wasn't going to have the cat, you know, uh, pigeonhole her work. Well, that's a, that is definitely, uh, uh, you know, a gallery's point of view. Usually, they don't stay with you if. Uh, and we could look at. I mean, Judy Papp has been wildly. I mean, she's been very, very successful. But she. Relatively. Uh, but she's had so many viewers who didn't want to change what she did, and right. she changes it all the time. It's never predictable. But that's that's not a, that's not a woman's issue. That's uh, an issue about well, how, that's an yes. how style and stylistic evolution has become more branding. branding. It's right. become yeah. branding because it's marketing because that's what galleries are about. Yeah. So that's where we are. <laughs> Lu Lucio Pozzi famously said <clears throat> way back in the late '80s yeah. that um, he routinely was asked by his dealers in Italy and France. Please find a style and stick with it. So he did a whole exhibition called God Help Me Find a Style. <laughs> and then he went on to do those those wonderfully absurd um, paintings to order. He put ads in different art publications and said, if you would like a painting to order, uh, you know, fill in the fill in the form or call this number or whatever. And he would send them a form and say, but the colors you like, do you want abstract? Do you want, you know, realism? What would you want? <laughs> and then he made several he people, it. serious collectors loved it because they knew Lucha, so they said, we're on, we're buying one. But remember also Palmar and Melamin when they did the survey oh, yeah. about what were the, oh, what were the ideal, uh, uh, what was the, I think it was limited to America, but what are the ideal elements in a painting? As I recall, it had to have late. And have a tree, and have a white horse, <laughs> and, and it had to be red. Sorry. And it had to have red, and then it had to have a mountain. And then they made several paintings. Yeah. It was actually international. Yeah, those are the. So I want to say back to this. Um, Rosemary thought of herself and was a Renaissance woman. The other thing she didn't say within, you know, painting or sculpture or installation or performance. I mean, she did everything. <laughs> And that's again, uh, you know, deadly in terms of a career. Well, thank you. <laughs> it is because again, yeah. the market doesn't like it. I mean, or the, the dealers don't like it. It's too confusing for them. Yeah, but also you have to say, okay. I mean, you know, I loved her dearly, uh, or I wouldn't be here. Um, but um, this was her choice. This was her way. You know, um, she's really stubborn, very hard-headed, <laughs> and. Uh, I, you know, she would have been a problem for her. I mean, you've been wonderful about staying with her for all of these years. I thought you were absolutely sanguine. And, um, but, but, you know, she she really didn't make it easy. And she didn't make it easy, she didn't make it easy, period. She didn't make it easy for herself. 
Uh, she chose difficult, uh, really demanding situations. And if anything was going really well, you know, Rosemary would find some way to make it out more yeah. difficult. Uh, well, and I mean, just in terms of shared physicality of making these things, she put huge burdens of difficulty uh, in terms of craft. The time, yeah, the, the, the big metal sculptures, which yeah. guys are incredible. I believe that. I mean, well, that was not so difficult to make. The ones yeah. that are impossible, and I don't even know how many there are, are those Wait. ones that are like Iron Maidens, you know, the little mm -hmm. caves and Iron Maidens. The little one there. Yeah, yeah, there's a small one. Which are like, but they're playing with an answer. That, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. No, but I, the, the ones I'm thinking of, and I don't know how many there were, but they came, they were very faceted. They were faceted, yeah. yeah. And they were, uh, well, they had this kind of, um, kind of hostility, with the, you know, kind of, you know, stay away from me. Instead of, they, but they were two-sided. They were like caves, mm -hmm. like get in here and feel warm and everything. And then they grabbed these points uh, mm -hmm. that were sharp. So, the, and I think that that's part of what the interest in her work, which is this tension. You know, there's a great deal of tension in all And drama. And drama. Oh, a lot of drama. Very good. A lot, a lot of drama. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, but for me, the idea that she would, you could, you could go to Rosemary's studio and two months later, she'd be off in some new direction. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And she'd be there grinding, she'd be welding right. her mask right. on, welding, right. and everything would go on. She was in her element. The tougher it was, the more she loved it. Well, that's true. Yeah. That, that, that's true. And that's just a psychological, some people are like that. Yeah. Some people like to make it. And I used the teaser because as we were both Pratt people, Pratt had this drilled into you if you went to Pratt back when we did. Be true to your work and your work will be true to you. Um, well, her work <laughs> came first. Weekend invitations, parties. Mm -hmm. If she was on a roll, no, I have to stay in my studio. Yeah. She would skip everything. All yeah, kinds of things. She would Even skip, doctor's appointments. She would skip yeah. it and stay focused on the work. She was indefatigable. Hell, I always wanted to ask a question, which I'm sure so I'm gonna wuss I am the welding, how could she do it in that what was it a fire hazard? I mean I probably it. she had a no, she had a fireproof floor area for the welding in the the whole welding setup was very safe, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and she was rigorous about that. Good. Um, I, 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 but it, it was it was significant to you know, she had a woodworking area, she had a, a welding area, she had saws, table saws, band saws, you know, you know jigsaws. She had it, it if she thought there was a machine that would do something that she'd never done before, she wanted that machine. I once went to an auction in the country with her and she bought a saw at the auction because you know it was like she didn't have that one. Table saw? No, a big thing. Big, yeah, big band saw. So that was but she it, reveled in that. But that it, that goes back into this sort of quote women's issue. Because I um, mean feminist art is not exactly give me the biggest saw that you've got, you know. <laughs> uh, let's make these great big metal things. Uh, so she's she's really not where she wasn't I mean, I don't think she intentionally uh, worked against stereotypes because she didn't have a strategy. It's just uh, the way she was. Um, but if you think of the kind of work she always did, uh, it, it was always against the grain. I mean, she's doing more of her work, nobody's doing it. Those those paintings, by the way, are, are great paintings. The, the, I don't know what, there's a kind of uh, general name for the ones, the T-shape. You know, right, the puzzle. puzzle. I call them the puzzle, the puzzle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did this big show of Monaco paintings, and I wanted one uh, for the show. So I go to the grocery and said, and they're covered with dirt, she can't find them. And I said, listen, this could be really important. But she wasn't helpful. No. no. So there was, so it wasn't well, that's what I meant to the element of the way, is it going against the... She um, went against, against, against yes. the, what we might call uh, necessary uh, moves within the art world, too. Yeah. But even somebody who like wanted to help her. I mean, she she was, know. No, I, I thought you were incredible hanging out there. I mean, I think <laughs> she gave you enough problems also. Because, uh, I, did, I was able to put her in some group shows, but those were pieces that were kind of already there, or I didn't have to do too much to get them. Right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, she wasn't easy. You know who else was like this? Even worse, Ray Johnson. Ray Johnson. When you wanted to oh, buy a work so from Ray cool. Johnson, he would come over to your house. This is the artist who did the You know the male art, art, you know who we're talking about? New York correspondence. Correspondence yeah. school, right. And he would come mm -hmm. over and have his little satchel and he'd put out the work. 
I was thinking I should get one because I could pay him all the time. So I say, okay, Ray, what do you what do you want for us? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. But Ray, you know, I, 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 I can give you the money. And, was no, I think Ray was, was, was perfectly happy to sell the work. I don't think she that's she did, but I'm just saying yeah. another way. Ray yeah. was also well. Look what he did. He, he went out to Long Island and he basically sequestered himself. Yeah, but also he did male art. I mean, he did this very minor art. Rosemary did major, major art, major and art. that's a big difference. I mean, oh, I know. Did, I'm just saying yeah. sort of, there are all these temperaments that do arise. Well, like, well, first now, Rosemary art. was doing that. Was the other thing she was. Yeah, the realm of sculpture is a particularly difficult one as well. Yes. Oh, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's hard to make it. It's difficult. The sell it is difficult. The store is difficult. Everything about it. Ship it. And, and ship That's it. why you have conceptual art. Yeah, because all you do is you pay the guy to take it, get on the train, and then that's it. And then you go. Let's just take Larry Wiener. He can travel the earth with, with, with the basketball press type. That's there you go. And then you have a career, and then you get a press agent. And I, I mean, so I think show the MoMA and so we really um, have to respect the astonishing respect. I think that's very important. I mean, I've Labor. always had, you know, tremendous respect for Rosemary as a person and as an artist. Um, she uh, she didn't lie, she eats the, you know, none of that bad stuff. And I even lived with her for a while, <laughs> and it's, I, I felt uh, that she was not feeling well. And I was living in Italy, and I was running a program, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I could hire her to teach sculpture. So she so came she, over. So she came, and, and I knew it would be good for her health, and it was. Uh, but I did get to live with her, and uh, it, it, it wasn't that easy. Interesting. It, no, she, she was difficult. She was a difficult in person. She was also great. In what way? Hmm? In what way? In what way? <laughs> well, if you were cooking, yes. she would be looking <laughs> over your Oh, you're going to put that? Uh, I would never put that. Are you yes. hypercritical? Be hypercritical of anything. Because okay. uh, she was just a contrary person. That was, <laughs> it, it was her personality. And it's what makes the work interesting because this doesn't come out of a simple person. No. I never thought of it that way as a, a contrary. Oh, she was very good. But, but, she was. You're right. She was, you know, there's that uh, Beast Month's book, Against the Grain. I mean, that was so uh, rosary. Mm -hmm. And that. Is what accounts for her originality because she's a genuinely original. Well, she forged, she excused the part of her own path, but also let's talk about how astonishingly touching her great love of dance and how the dance she embodied it in her sculpture yes. in this incredibly original yeah. way. Yeah. And if you look at them and you understand that she was addicted, or yeah. devoted to dance, yeah. uh, and, and this was her way of expressing it or whatever. I think these are what these these the dance are going to Oh um, yeah, yes, yes. I think that's a very important And I, it may, I was thinking earlier today we could now lament the death of our criticism, which Barbara and I will be happy to do if anyone wants to talk about it. <laughs> but um, we don't any longer often see too much that talks about what other disciplines an artist is deeply involved in, whether it's literature, whether it's dance, whether it's music. But your career, how could you be interested in those other things? Your career is what's it's interesting. You have to be interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> getting there. But so, no, so everything's changed. I mean, yeah. in the sense that, uh, that Rosemary is not a personality who would thrive in today's situation. Right. Regardless, she just wouldn't. No. No. Uh, it, it, it's not uh, cut out for multidisciplinary, as much as they talk about it, that's not what they mean at all. Uh, they mean a bunch of gadgets and, you know, and more of like a little, little bit of movies and a little bit of sound and a little bit of York and a little bit of drama and a little bit of, you know, but they don't, they don't mean. But I'm saying her, her, her commitment and, 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 and love of, 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 of <laughs> <laughs> working with uh, Yvonne Rainer. Well, working with Yvonne Rainer. I don't know how many of you know she did that, but she did. Yeah. And she, uh, I, I would say that was her, you know, her second passion. Really. Yeah, it was absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and I, she did yoga every day. And yeah. I remember we were on a boat to Sicily with our students, and the boat was much better at it than I was. Um, and you know, she did these very, very complex. So Bud's going like this, and she's doing these really complex inverted positions and stuff. And 
So there's a physicality about the work, but there's also, you know, there's all this talk about body, body, whatever, because it's chic. But um, she, she, you know, she translated the movement of the body into these metaphorical forms. Yeah, but but I'm glad you brought that up. And even the fluidity of the line, a lot of it, you know, it should have been ingrained in her in her being. Um, I think all of her work, um, from from the perspective of, of my side. Uh, always involved a sense of motion and energy. Perhaps sometimes, as you said, in the, in the pointy, and sort of dangerous right. pieces, yeah. Yeah. compressed, but that it's energy is there, it's kind, it's kind, it's kind of ready to burst out. Yeah. I mean, you, the piece behind us, by the way, is from 1970. Its title is Triptych. Um, this piece came from the, the earlier pieces that were the brush strokes on the wall. And the brush strokes were cut out with jigsaws, mm -hmm. textured with white gesso to create a dimensionality to the surface. And then Rosemary, after the gesso had dried, would draw on them with graphite. Mm -hmm. So in rotating corners, which is right here, you see these huge brush strokes with a three-dimensional effect created by the gesso and graphite. Frozen movement. Frozen movement. Frozen movement. Yeah. But you know, it's, there's not a real critical vocabulary to talk about her work because it's so singular. It's a, you know, it, it, even though it's scale, it's ambition, I think you have to say it's major work, but it doesn't, it, that's right. I mean, Ray Johnson didn't try to be a major artist. That was not no, his ambition. No. Uh, but, but Rosemary wanted to be out there in the big Do you know who I would compare her to in a weird way is Ursula. But right, I'm right. In terms of the mind, no, the, the, the Oh, I yeah. But in terms of the, just, I love the, 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 and she has something like six guys up there you know, peeing on the wall. There was an interesting show at, at the, um, that just closed at the um, Met Broyer, the former Whitney. Yes. Um, um, a, yeah, Nasreen Mohadi. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and it was work that I was not familiar with at all. But looking at that show, I was amazed to see threads of Rosemary's work, of Rosemary's friend and peer, Sal Witt, mm -hmm. um, other artists. Uh, you know, you think that through knowledge or by coincidence? I think it was, it, it's interesting because I tried to read a bit of her biography to see whether she had met certain artists. Uh, she was a big fan, uh, just through literature, learning about Agnes Dennis, but mm -hmm. she, uh, was very, I mean, if you look at some of Rosemary's early works from the late 60s and early 70s, works on paper, and you put them in a show with Nasreen, you would say, gee, the, these two women were on a, on a track together, even though they didn't know each other, couldn't have been aware of each other. It's fascinating. But there are, there, yeah, there are, there that are happens. coincidences. That, yeah, no, yeah, that I, happens. I, I've, I've seen it now, certain kinds of coincidences, yeah. and, and they are literally coincidences. But they are something in the context or the environment or the psychology of the person or whatever. That or the time frame. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the cultural context. Um, I think uh, one aspect of Rosemary's personality uh, that you see in the work, but if you knew her, uh, you know, you'd get it right away, was her insecurity and courage. Mm -hmm. I didn't know she was ill for many, many, oh, many years. No, I mean, of course I did eventually, one would know. But uh, I, I didn't know how long she'd been ill or how serious. I used to take her to the doctor, so I knew. Well, I don't know. I don't know when you when you found out. You know, I mean, I knew in the last ten or twenty years, but I didn't know when. It, yeah, I, I didn't know when she you know, began to be ill, and then she never made a thing ill. She never 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 never, talk, never complained ever. Never, not no, once. No. And the she only, didn't let it stop her. No. And that I think was why I was so shocked. She, I, I was in the country when she died, and I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't believe it. In this, uh, I've been working closely with the family and, and her estate, and in this exhibition, we have work um, just on that wall over there, work on, on paper from uh, 
the early part of the 2000s. And there's a series of three pieces that the family wanted me to consider for the show, and I said, yes, they're in. Mm -hmm. And it's um, three eye charts. And the top letter is a big capital E. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you look at an eye chart, the letters get smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. and you know, you're covering your eye. One of them is the eye chart through her left eye. The next one is the eye chart through her right eye. And the third one is the eye chart through both eyes. And that group of three was done in 2006, 10 years ago. When you look at those, you realize that she could barely see. Yeah, and she was still creating work. I knew she had a serious vision problem. We discussed it. We talked about doctors. But she never let on how bad it was. Never, I, I, when I saw those, it just really shook me. Well, this, I mean, that, that, that level of courage. Courage. That's the right word. Incredible. Yeah. Well, and the, and the courage is in the work because right. how can you keep making this work that, yes, you know, some people are responding to it, uh, but not a lot. You're not getting big applause. And, you know, you're, yeah. you're not, you're not uh, getting to be Nikki the San Paul or the S or, you know, yada yada. You, as, as a person, anyway, it's, you're not, you're not, you're not getting the kind of feedback that would give you the will. So you had to have just sheer guts. Right. I mean, the belief in herself, <laughs> which uh, I it just was so, it was so impressive. So she was just a, a truly impressive person. What's strange is interesting. You think that uh, Rosemary and Children, you know, that would go. My daughter's absolutely devoted to her. If she knew her as a child. Rachel. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rachel. Rachel loves Rosemary. And um, you know, always did loves her work, kept up with it. But she liked her as a, a little kid, uh, and she did have a playful quality. She which again, and she was very. Up in the she work. didn't talk down to children. No, no. But that's what my daughter liked. <laughs> she was born to talk to. We have with us today Rosemary's niece, who did know her as a young child, and uh, I think I think that happens in their relationship. Did you feel that too? That, that, um, Choose to find a buddy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, she was my aunt, so I knew her as my aunt. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of missed all this growing up, this art thing, because she never really wanted to, uh, to talk to us about it. So we to her, we were just you know, family and kids, and let's have fun, and let's you know, put everything else aside. She didn't foist it on you. She really did. Right. No, but she was also, it's also the left side fun part, too. I mean, she was, she was just a, in no way was a draggy, drippy person. Mm -hmm. And she was really upbeat. She was always, you know, go-go. She was, uh, she was fantastic about things like that. But I, I, I often think about that. Uh, and I, I think, God, amazing, given what she was actually going through. Yeah, we, Janet and I, uh, on, on her wonderful radio show last week, talked about um, what was happening in early in her career when we were first working together after I had a gallery and said, I'd love to show your work. And I didn't want her to sever her relationship with Tibor Dinaj or any other company. That was not of interest to me, but I did want to try to promote her work because I loved it so much. I think, in fact, I'm sure that was of my making because John Myers was one of my best friends. I was going to say, well, John yeah. was and still Johnny was still alive. No, it was Johnny. And, uh, and I, I think I, I talked Johnny into showing But it wasn't. Yeah, a number yeah, of other people. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. I worked for him. You don't remember that. Me and David. I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, that was really funny. Nice. Nice. We were the, we were the oh, slaves so <laughs> from the New York Review. We took Joseph Cornell's tea board in the lounge. Very funny. But, um, well, those again, I mean, if you had a gallery like Tea Board, who you know, was barely there or whatever, he was floating those. And then, but you had a personality like Johnny Myers. I, I was talking with somebody today, and I said, you know, the art world's a really rotten place because the good people are gone. I mean, Tom Hiss is dead. Henry's dead. Johnny Myers is dead. I mean, all of the, uh, even David, Holly, even Holly. Yeah, even Holly. Yeah. yeah. David Whitney is dead. I mean, all the all the people who kept it going in terms of, of quality, values, innovation. And we're not about money or branding. No. They're gone. Those people are just gone. 
And without them, the only people one I think is still there. Sam Wagstaff. Yeah. You know, you, and then I think Mitchell Elvis is pretty. Cool. You might go to him. Yeah, he's. I think he's kind of a. He's a pretty good guy. But, but there were people yeah. who were simply going to, you know, schlag it out. And it was just it was just not the, no matter what, no matter how awful it was and poor or whatever. I mean, John, you know, made some kind of fabulous pasta or whatever. He never had a dime. Yeah, no, and he got me to cook, you know. There you go. <laughs> you know, I'll just give her just a, a diaper. Rosemary may even know this, but he and a, the first boyfriend, the, the musical, the, the director, you know, the new uh, Lonnie Lee. No, Dave, uh, 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 Herbert. Just, Herbert. Yeah, so Herbert. Yeah. What we would serve to uh, W.H. Martin, uh, yeah, and we would serve stuffed peppers. Yeah, because Johnny said, it's a dollar and a quarter a person. <laughs> they were the most fabulous qualities. That's a tool of bankhead. That's right. Um, and I, and and I came and he put a big cigar in his mouth and pulled there. I was too terrified to talk to any of them. No, they would have the most glamorous parties and they had but zero. I mean, zero. Yeah. I know, but anyway. And nobody would live that way. Anymore. I think Rosemary probably very much liked Johnny's literary. Um, Oh, they got along great. No, they really they liked each other. I'm sure oh, they, they, they got along perfect. Because John was also, first of all, a uh, polymath, and he was interested in everything. Uh, you know, he had a puppet theater. Do you remember his I know. Kurt Sullivan. And the puppets were made by Kurt Sullivan. And, well, I mean, th th those, that kind of a person doesn't exist anymore. Not in the art world. Or certainly, I mean, maybe outside of New York. I, I don't really know. But I think maybe not in the so-called visual art world. Uh, I don't know. Very happy Janet and I were talking about, it could be a whole series of panel discussions about corporate art world. 2016. It's, it's worse than that. Yeah, it's worse it's than that. It's much worse than that. It's, 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 it's like, global corporate. Yeah. Um, I mean, the galleries, so-called galleries, are not galleries. They are corporations. And they are set up as organ grants. And the so-called uh, dealers uh, are simply uh, uh, hedge fund brokers. Uh, they put together cartels, and then they have these people who manage their satellites. And I think half the time they don't know what's in their satellite galleries in the same building. I don't think so. Because no one person could be interested in all of those things. It's yeah. impossible. Well, remember another terrifying fact that someone just told me that anyone here can disclaim this. I was told that well this year there will be 250,000 MFAs graduating. Isn't that insane? <laughs> <laughs> you know what they're called? They're called bottled trust variants. They are trust variants. Their parents need to do something with them, and so they, 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 they basically store them in these MFA programs. And they think I will get one of these degrees, and then I will make money because artists make money, and it's glamorous, and, and I'll get fancy clothes, and I'll go to old news, and I'll get to do drugs, and I'll, and I'll have a lifestyle, and you know, yeah, it's lifestyle. But it's lifestyle bought by the rich parents. You can't possibly afford this. I mean, the MFA program took out of circulation the idea, largely, of apprenticing yourself. That's right. Everyone, that's, everyone we knew worked for another artist. They did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was the Bottega, you know, thing, and that is where you got your training because you needed a job, so you became an artist assistant. You became a slave for a while, but you learned how to make stuff. Yeah, that was the system when. when it's an interesting point because Rosemary, a few times I would orchestrate uh, a summer intern for her at the studio. Oh, God. <laughs> she probably didn't keep them very long. <laughs> she didn't really want she them. Didn't want and them. one woman who was head over heels in love with Rosemary's work and uh, in awe of her talent and her ability and her strength and her courage, uh, Rosemary said, I can't work with her anymore. I said, why? And she said, She's she's trying to steal my ideas. Right. She keeps asking me how I make things. Right. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. There was always a reason. Yeah. There was always a reason. A contrary reason. Yeah. No. I mean, she what she did. She was. No. Here was somebody who basically had everything except money. Literally everything. She was beautiful. Yes. And incredibly beautiful. Strong. She, strong. Well, strong in men women doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. But anyway, yes, yeah, strong. Uh, superbly talented, intelligent, funny. She had everything going for her. 
So she had to work really hard to make that not work. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Oh, yeah. No, she was single-minded. Well, but also now you have to say she, there was, you know, there's, there, there's an, uh, an aspect of self-destructiveness, but there is often in, in many great artists. Absolutely. Um, I mean, these people who just zip along from success to success, you have to wonder. You have to wonder. I, I mean, I'm dealing Oh, I can quote a Johnny Myers uh, axiom to you. As Johnny Myers would sometimes say, well, not as deep as a well, but it's kind of as deep as an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I would say Johnny. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And a lot of artists like that. But but you know there there there's just there there are very opinion makers. Uh, well, first, first of all, I mean my sort of bottom line is it's not that the emperor has no clothes. It's that there is no emperor. Yes. There there is no authority. There is no um, so therefore money, marketing, branding. I mean it doesn't matter what you're selling because nobody knows the difference. That's right. Um, that that. No, there's no, there's no, there's no cultural hierarchy. No, 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 not when the museums are being banked by the emerging collectors and the galleries. No, then it's over. Then you know it's absolutely over. Um, and and when what they really want to get out of it is more trips and more international kayaking, you know, uh, banana eating, hammock line by biennials, and that's what the curators really want. Uh, and that the amount of money that's being spent and the amount of people. Who are hired in these museums who used that used to be run by five people. Yeah. Right. Something is wrong. It's really wrong. Well, now we have all the satellite galleries and well, whatever. Places. I don't know. It's it's the, it's all it's 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 imploded. It doesn't none of it works anymore. So. When, when we had the <clears throat> apart from this gallery, we had a gallery in East Village in the eighties. Yeah. So the East Village gallery, the big day was Sunday, mm -hmm. and so Sunday. People well, it would, is again, you should go back. Yeah. Uh, people would come in, well dressed people who obviously had, you know, made a killing in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And they would ask me what they should buy. Mm -hmm. They would say, Well, who's hot? Right. What what should yes, we buy? What's hot? They have no idea what they might really like. They didn't know they should like anything. It was just, Nor did they uh, like anything. And this we're, we're talking let's say 84, 85. So to me, looking back, that was the beginning of the shift toward art as a commodity, art as a status symbol. Oh, sure. well, art, also, art is something particularly, you know, to have on your wall so that when people came over, they, oh, you've got a new Rauschenberg, or you've got a new Stella, or you've got a new Castoro. Well, for Castoro, that was tough because of all the reasons we've talked about, but for other artists who found a signature style, you know, they fit into that system. But I tried to help people understand that they could buy art that they actually liked. Mm -hmm. They just had to look <coughs> around enough to see what stayed in their heart and in their head. That wasn't easy. No, but they, they didn't sure. want to be bothered. They don't, they don't, no. they don't. They're, no. they're, they're, they're much too busy working out and, and uh, getting on their own. It's all so Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Especially in, in Manhattan, which I think is, it, it's just dead as a doornail. I mean, I don't live here, so I can say it, but it's just, I don't, you know, I don't get it, you know, and, but I, you know, it's, it's wonderful that, you know, you're showing Rosemary, people think will should. be interested, people will continue to be interested, uh, and uh, it'll, it'll live, it'll go on. And, and yeah. that, oh, her, her art is. But when, when we look at your, what you're talking about, those 250,000 MFA people, what, what they're turning out is, is a joke. It's between a joke and I have to say, Jerry Saltz, the one thing that he, you know, his great phrase is zombie abstraction. That's I mean, Walter. Zombie abstraction. That was, Jerry. Is that that was Walter Robbins. Walter invented that term. Oh, oh yeah. that wasn't Jerry. No, oh, no, Jerry right. just picked it up. Okay, well, it's really right. It's that that's what it is. Give Walter the credit. Don't give Walter the credit. Yeah, and no, yeah. it's zombie abstraction. That's it. But but people don't need it. They don't need it. Well, you don't need it when you're in. Uh, you're you're absolutely overwhelmed with a information and b visual images in, from your from your from, computer, yeah, your, yeah. your phone, yeah. everywhere. It's very easy to have. Um, well, you've seen all the i i iPad. I mean the iPhone ads on TV that are coming from people's 
amateur photographs. I think that's very interesting. Most of them are very, very good. Yeah. So it's a whole other discussion, but Rosemary also, if you if you think of the art of the career, to be to be kind of coming of age as an artist in the '60s, which was a, man, a tiny club in New York, then overwhelmed by the onslaught of everybody who comes to New York in the late '70s, when when actually when food, you know, mm -hmm. when Manicard started the mm -hmm. restaurant, but that's when all the Californians came. Mm -hmm. And then you also had, unfortunately semiotics in October, and then that kind of wrecked the, the ability for anyone to actually want to read about any of that. That's very true. Yes, that definitely is not reading that art. And academicized it in a terrible Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's I mean, I want to read, okay, just global corporations. How many people in this room actually, actually read art form? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Only on that. You read it cover to cover, don't you? I don't believe you. I don't believe you for one minute. I made a sculpture of a pile of them. <laughs> no, but I mean, how silly. Think of Called the Tower of Babel, actually. And, you see, and, and, and in a way, it's probably the one that has the most energy. So all those, the, all the, what Barbara's saying to I agree, all the hierarchies were gone, the supports were Everything. pulled out from under the intellectual uh, uh, infrastructure yeah. as we lost, um, as the publishing was disintermediated by the internet. We know all this, we all know all this, and then anything goes, and anybody can do anything they want, and therefore nobody cares. I think the problem with a lot of art writing now is that writers are developing their theories, and they're using art to yeah. illustrate their theories. Well, that always and you can exchange yeah. an artist's work for another artist's work, and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's yeah. about the writer and their ego and their, and right. their this theory. Is and you know what? There's no place for theory in the artist's studio. Well, not there's not, not that to, as, as to be not It's just it's yeah. just mind. It's like mind games. Well, it's theory has replaced iconography. It is iconography, uh, and you know all of this business about let's get iconography out of abstract art and everything. Well, it's back in. It's but it's theory, and you have to instead of knowing the story of Ulysses and Circe and all this, you've well, got to know about reasons. Uh, you know semiotics and. Um, I don't know what the latest, uh, I, I kind of, I don't know. I'm well, not, there was I'm almost, not really you know, the, 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 the other uh, authority. And, but um, when you have no vigorous intellectual interchange, even, I mean, now, what do you say, then, uh, Rosemary actually did, she, she did keep a group of people that she, she played chess, she did all these things, she did have an intellectual life, a big one. Um, most artists don't have that anymore. Well, you know, not I mean, the other this is really interesting about chess because I've played chess with Rosemary. Um, Frank and I and uh, Rosemary and, and Carl Andre, uh, we played chess all the time. And there was a reason. And that was because he had a lot of time and no money. Uh, and so that's what we did. I mean, you could even go to the movies. But I have to tell you that Rosemary always won. <laughs> she that's always won. Exactly. Exactly. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, should we ask for questions from anybody? We have a few minutes for questions, if you have any. No? Do you think this, uh, <coughs> well, is there any difference between the corporatization of the art world and the literary world and the whatever arts are, are there left in the film world and the I mean, don't we really see these same forces happening mm -hmm. everywhere? Well, look, they, 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 we might count the marginalization of poetry. Goodbye, poetry. Oh, uh, what was that? Can you spell it? No. Yeah. Gone. Well, I don't That's know. I just, came, to destroy, isn't it? I just came back from Molenbeek. It's in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And it's where the terrorists and the artists live. And uh, nobody has any money, and uh, they all live there together. Everybody's perfectly like it's Soho in the late '60s, early '70s. And there's a little cafe called the Deconin, and probably people would get killed there. I don't know, uh, but it's uh, it's it, it's just once you add money into the equation and you add globalism into the equation, you've got a whole other situation. First of all, look how bad the movies are. Uh, how, I mean, we didn't have movies that were that bad before. Uh, even the so-called indie movies are bad. So, um, well, first of all, 
in a larger context, but you know, we're, we're talking about Rosemary, so I shouldn't bring up the larger context. But I mean, it is the decline of the West. It is the end of Western culture. It's, it's over. I mean, I, and not one of us in this room can save it, unfortunately. Um, but you know, you, you try to look for quality where you see it. Uh, and and uh, you try to, you know, if you're a writer, you try to communicate what it is that you're seeing to somebody else. But unfortunately, um, most people don't have room in their lives, and for reasons that you said, uh, for uh, you know, actual aesthetic experiences. Because I don't think that looking at your gadgets is an aesthetic experience, but it certainly sucked all the energy because it's visual. Mm -hmm. Can I add something to that? And that is that that the funding mechanisms for art drain all the creativity out of it. In other words, you always have to tell what you're going to do before you do it. By the time you, you're you done explaining what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it. There's nothing you want to do. The programming follows funding. Yeah, that's right. But, um, so that also is a kind of... Well, hey, you can't matter for that. Here you get back to having real deal, which, like, Johnny had no money, but he would talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, these, these real dealers or real people who were really interested would go to the studio and they would listen to your problems or whatever, work it out with you, and maybe find somebody who would give you a little bit of something or other, or, you know. But there, there are none of these people around anymore. So you're filling out forms, or, or other people are filling out forms for grants from either. Oh, they call grantsmanship thing. That didn't, you know, there were no grants. What? Grants? Mm -hmm. any, any, a little bit of NEA money, that was all. Very much. But uh, no, so we have a, 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 I mean, I really wish Rosemary were here. I'd love to hear what she would say. But uh, she, her fierce independence was really extremely impressive. Well, it's incredible that she had the career that she did. Quite it frankly. is. Uh, given, given how difficult her work was, how difficult it was to make, sometimes expensive, uh, and, and that she was able to do it. Uh, well, yes, that's a very good point. But think of the material expense of. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this isn't exactly doing a bunch of watercolors. I mean, you had to buy all the all the tools, all the metal, all all all, all of the guests. I mean, how did she do that? I mean, how did she how did she afford it? Yeah. There were every once in a while somebody would come along. You know. Um, yeah, we we in the early eighties we sold a beautiful piece to the modern. We sold a great piece to the New York Museum. Um, and yeah, we got her into great shows all the time, but. Um, that wasn't enough to push her up to the star, you know, the rock star level. Well, what's interesting, if she showed with Lico Castelli, who showed very few women artists until the very end, I mean, they were, everyone said, well, one of his girlfriends would get in there, but it only lasted as long as the girlfriend lasted. But then he finally had, um, who, he had one or two women at the end, whatever. I can't even remember. Mia Westerland, is that her name? Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. well, whatever. Westerland. Yes, yeah. uh, I think she was at the very end. But Mia, Mia Westerland, and then yeah. she went to, uh, you know, um, uh, Augustine's dealer, uh, David, uh, who just closed the store. David McKee. David McKee. David McKee. But finish your job. Nothing, just that, you know, the, the, uh, the so called, you know, dealers. Uh, we're not, uh, had a very strange relationship with women. Well, I would like to say, uh, you know, what you're asking about, to, and, and knowing all of the, I mean, knowing Rosemary, knowing Deborah Remington, knowing uh, uh, Mary Bauermeister, knowing- Oh, she's wonderful. I know. Yeah. Well, she, of course, went back to Germany, yeah. and she had a very early success in these early six yes, years. Yes, I know. But then she went back, she got ill from the glue. Yeah, really. And true. then she went back with Scott yeah. Cousins. But the dealers I knew, oh, Colette, oh my God, Colette. When men, uh, dealers, would, would have these women, they, at a certain point, they just throw up their hands and they didn't want them. Somehow, I mean, this happened over and over and over again. And you know that. You know that about Colette. Yeah, she's back in town. Yeah. And, and somehow, mm -hmm. Hal, you were a, a paragon and an angel, but a lot of men, dealers, somehow didn't know how to. Um, advance the careers of those women who were often married. Unless they reminded them of their mothers. 
I have to say that when we were younger, this morning, but when we were younger, life, the weather was when it's sunny or it's rainy or it's not. We didn't have wind chill factors. And, and, and they, they, the weather says it's 79, but it seems like 69.3. What happens is about 20 years ago, I realized maybe more, that we were being cultured to death. I felt we were being cultured to death. Life is extremely complicated. Every day, I'm sure you have this too, there are forms to fill out, things to do, things out of left field. I mean, it's just <laughs> countless little things like a, a bunch of fleas can bring down an elephant. But I must say that one of the things I'm still for the canon, etc. And I still think there is excellence out there. It's more difficult to find. You have to be extreme, extremely selective, extremely selective, which is not easy because you have so much, so much more to do. And, and do you when, get anybody to listen to you? You know, I have a mil, I have a, a million people that I'm in contact with because I, etc. But I can only have conversations with two or three people, like Einstein, right? That because nobody is talking that way. They're very, very busy, and they don't—they're not talking. So we're all like dancing as fast as we can. As far as film, there's a lot of wonderful film film out there. I mean, yeah. I, I love film. I do too. But but I, I, but I you find very little, yeah. especially in this country. I mean, it's, it's really. Well, I always preferred foreign films, it's French, yeah, Italian, English. Really very good either. That's the thing yeah. that's so sad. Nowadays, they're, 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 they're Italian, but when the French movies are really lousy, and they are really lousy, uh, you have a real problem. I mean, the Italians still are turning out things like El Divo and, and Youth was pretty good, but you can get a decent Italian film. But uh, the, I haven't seen a good French film in I don't know how long. There's a great uh, multiplication of distractions. And then, uh, well, there, there's, we're all talking about the same thing about the multiplication of distractions. And there's also a decline of education, which we can talk about that. Yeah. I, I also found, um, I mean, I find artists, younger artists, are really very badly educated. They, they're not educated at all. In spite of the other. No, they can't read. They, they, they don't read. They don't read. That's it. They can't the draw. Right they can't they can't read. Read. It's okay. all Instagram. There, uh, there, was, there was a thing at the Basel Art Fair, which I cut out because I thought it was so great. It, it was the I don't read books fair. <laughs> okay, well, why don't I just admit it? It's true. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know what they did there. But oh, you mean the book fair that they had at Basel? Yeah. Oh, I don't read yeah. books. <laughs> <laughs> But Dr. Rosary, no, I think that back that we should all have, should now think very hard, uh, which is very uh, I won't, we'll let you, but how to keep Rosemary's work in front of yes. as many yes. people as we can. Yes. And that would be something we could definitely do for her. And she okay. more than deserves it, and we probably should have done more during the lifetime. And Barbara, you did a great deal. I did what I could, but I wanted to do more, but she stopped me. I know. She's good then. But way back in 72, you were writing for New York Magazine. That's right. Kind of and you had the thing if you put her in Vogue. You could yeah, a lot of them. I tried. Yeah. I tried. I wanted her to be in the, the monochrome show, and she would have been a sensation. She would have. Because she and she managed to uh, not find the paintings, have yeah. one really dirty one around in the, in the studio, which she refused to restore. No, I mean, seriously. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so but we, we will we will persevere. Right. Because she did. Yeah. Yes. I mean she did continue to work. Mm -hmm. She does, she did continue to work regardless. Well I would say also if anything, she increased the complexity of the work mm -hmm. and she never uh, you know how you talk about in a, a dance performance or a theater of keeping the pace. I, mean, I don't think she even when she was packed line, she never stopped. She no, never stopped. That's and, the courage you're talking about. Which was there. <clears throat> um, seldom wrong, never in doubt. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.